It feels right to begin with a story about Ronald Reagan. And I really only have one. In the spring of 1980, I turned 18 and came of age politically. My father, who was a high school guidance counselor and a teacher before that, had decided to run for an open seat in the Pennsylvania State Legislature. I became consumed with his campaign and enamored with politics, Republican politics in particular. In my native Bucks County, Pennsylvania, I befriended a young lawyer named Charlie Giroux. And Charlie was a Pennsylvania regional coordinator for the 1980 Reagan campaign. And one night in my hometown at a local GOP meeting, he pulled me aside and he said, tomorrow, Governor Reagan is going to appear in the Italian market of Philadelphia, which was at the time sort of an obligatory campaign stop. If you remember the scene in Rocky when Sylvester Stallone runs up 9th Street and produce vendors are throwing him oranges and so forth. That's the Italian market. Charlie also had a tip for me. The tip was that in addition to greeting those street vendors, Ronald Reagan was going to make an appearance inside a meat market called Esposito's. It's still there. As a matter of fact, he said precisely at 2.50 in the afternoon, Ronald Reagan will be standing in Esposito's meat market, and he actually scribbled that information on the back of his business card for me. You can see, I'm supposed to ask for Lou Esposito. The following day, I skipped school with a high school buddy who's still a good friend of mine. His name is Mike Stockel, Jr. We rode the train from our suburban community into Philadelphia, then boarded a trolley and made our way down to the Italian market. We could tell immediately as we stood inside Esposito's that there was excitement outside. There was a move afoot. Governor Reagan really was in the neighborhood. But nobody was inside except the two of us and those who were working as meat cutters. So we got nervous. We thought, well, maybe there's been a change. Maybe he's really not going to come in here. And just then the door opened, like the parting of the Red Sea, and in strode Governor Reagan with just two Secret Service in his detail. He was as gracious as could be as these two punks from the suburbs quickly passed a pocket Instamatic camera. Do you remember those? Between us and had our photographs taken. Disappointment came two days later when we drove to Photomat. Tell your kids about that. You see, I hadn't wanted to carry the flash attachment for the camera on the train into the city. If you look carefully over the president's shoulder, you can make out the word sausage. <laughs> no matter, the excitement of that encounter, coupled with my father's, albeit unsuccessful, run for the state legislature, really fueled me, fired me up to be involved at the time in Republican politics. And that's what eventually led me to a career in the media. Fast forward a decade after the encounter with then Governor... Or maybe I'll share the story of that time that I had my picture taken with Governor Reagan. See, I met him again after the failed mission in the Italian market of Philadelphia in the spring of 1980. In late summer, I was getting ready to shove off to college, where, by the way, I formed a campus-wide organization for Reagan-Bush supporters... And I got another phone call from that friend of mine, the Reagan coordinator, Charlie Giroux. The governor was coming back to town, this time for a fundraiser for Arlen Specter, who was running for the United States Senate. It was a $250 per person event in the Rose Garden Ballroom of the Bellevue Stratford in Philadelphia. Charlie knew I didn't have the 250. But nonetheless, I put on my only sport coat and I drove into town. I had the same pocket Instamatic with the 110 film, only this time I carried the flash attachment. Charlie met me as I stepped off the elevator. He slapped a name tag on my lapel. Yeah, that's the name tag. And that's all it took to gain entry. I'll never forget that Governor Reagan spoke. He was very entertaining. And at the conclusion of his remarks, as he was approaching the door, he worked a rope line and he was coming my way. I was all alone. I quickly handed that camera to a total stranger and said, will you please take a picture? He obliged. At Photomat, a few days later, 
I was rewarded. Three months later, he was elected president of the United States, and I was so excited that Christmas that I sent out cards and I included that picture. <laughs> Thank you so much for what has been a great privilege for me to be here. Thank you. Thank you for that.